All right, we'll be getting to it in just a moment. We are delighted to bring Roseanne Barr today. Uh, she and I, I spent a little time in her house doing her podcast, and that was not enough time. So I wanted to bring her back to interview her uh, on my turf. You can find her at Roseanne Barr, B-A-R-R dot -R com. Tumble, Roseanne Barr. Uh, Twitter is at The Real Roseanne, and she spells her name R-O-S-E-A-N-N-E. Uh, yeah, check out her podcast. It's really fun. Uh, and she's done some really, said some interesting things. She's got some interesting ideas. Um, I always, there's, there's her podcast right there, which she very kindly uh, welcomed me as a guest. So we will be welcoming her after this. Our laws, as it pertains to substances, are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Valentine's Day is around the corner, so it is time to look your absolute best. Our friends at GenuSale are celebrating Valentine's Day with a special gift just for you. From now until Valentine's Day, get a limited time gift of beauty box free with your order at GenuSale.com slash Drew. Each beauty box has two of GenuSale's top sellers for you to give a try. It's absolutely free. And right now, save over 60% off all of our favorite GenuCell products with one of our customized skincare packages. I know I'm a snob about the products I use on my face. Everybody knows it. Every time I go to the dermatologist's office, they're just rows and rows of different creams. Retinols, vitamin C cream, under eye cream, night creams. Scrubs. And then when I get to the counter, they're overpriced. All kinds of products that you can all find at GenuCell.com. Plus, with its immediate effects, GenuCell promises results that will make you smile. It's guaranteed or 100% of your money back. To let yourself and a loved one with our limited edition bundles right now at GenuCell.com slash Drew. Use our special code Drew at checkout for extra savings off your order today. And remember, every order placed is automatically upgraded to free shipping. Don't wait. That is GenuCell.com slash Drew, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash D-R-E-W. Yeah, I just think Roseanne is one of these people that needs no introduction. Everyone knows Roseanne. Let me quickly go over our upcoming schedule because uh, Emily Barsh, our producer, has been ex done an extraordinary job going forward. And, and today is, of course, no exception. That is some of what's coming up uh, on Thursday. W Tree tomorrow. Nikki and Jim Norton. Nikki is hysterical. You all need to know her better. James O'Keefe, of course. Alex Berenson. Zuby. Uh, I'm seeing also uh, Dave Rubin, Adam Carolla, Kevin Bass. Uh, just a lot of extraordinary guests coming. So stay tuned for all that. But right now, as I said, today is no exception in terms of offering extraordinary guests. Let's bring in the only, the one and only Roseanne. Hey. Hey there. How you doing? I was just thinking you're you you become like Cher, you know, people that have just the one name identifier. It's a certain it's a certain quality of uh, success that gives you that. So uh, that that's kind weird? of interesting. The other thing, yeah, is weird. And the other thing is, I couldn't um, get into some as, country. You know, back in the day, I was traveling around yeah. the world, and they didn't know me in some countries where I was going on vacation. And I had the one name on my stuff, and they had never heard of it. So they had to make 3,000 phone calls to see what kind of person doesn't have a family name. And that was in France, and they held me over. And I said, everyone knows who I am by that one name. And the guy in the French police guy, he goes, really, everyone? I go, everyone in the United States. So I said, where's some Americans? So they... They said, come over here. So I go over there and I go, you know who I am, right? And they go, you're Rosie O'Donnell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it really helped. I swear that really helped. Was, it, was Rosie close enough for the French police? Did they figure, <laughs> that's it? They, they, like, they, they, they heard thought. Roseanne maybe? They, no, yeah. they, uh, they said, obviously, no one knows who you are. Or something like that. Oh, or disparaging. No, I knew. But I had to get oh, the uh, I had to get like the civil authorities involved because I only had the one name. So that's where I had to go change all my passport and everything to put my I was so dumb. 
Why did you do that? Uh, I know you have some strong feelings about your family of origin. Was it something to do with that? What? I, I'm well. The, all right, I'll re, I'll review a story of that I reviewed on your podcast. Which was the first time I met Roseanne. Susan, do you know the story? Oh God! Yeah, but that's you know what, Doctor Drew. Yeah. That's well, just over and done. I actually, my I, my mother's ninety years old, and we have yeah. uh, come to a peaceful place including everyone in our family, and it was devastating. We lost our youngest sister last year over many of mm. these issues and, um, you know, in their various forms. And so I'm not willing to go there or talk about it because it's a healed over thing to me that I don't owe anybody any explanations about because they won't understand it anyway because most people well, don't well, understand the dark night yeah. of the soul nor do they understand yeah. what victims go through, especially as children. So to be right. to be somebody whom a bunch of effing ghouls will look at and go, see, little kids are all liars when when they say we're doing stuff to them. I know how it no, works. No, 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 the no, no. And I'm yeah. not going to, I'm against the devil. And the devil, he likes no. to hurt children. And it don't matter the people that he acts through. They're not our enemy, the people that the devil acts through. The devil is our enemy. So yeah, I, I will tell you what course, and yeah, that's in the I'm, human heart, you know? It's in the human yeah, heart. Yes. That isn't something that yes. I, I sell. Uh, you know, I, I like to do that's why I love doing my sitcom because I could discuss big topics like that in a in a 20 uh at the time it was 24 minute little forum with four acts you know i prefer to talk about yeah. things but uh, you know as far as like getting real personal about that i mean you can ask me but no no need no no, no need no need listen no, I, but I'm i will completely only say, open I, only say because I am healed so let me say yeah, that which i can I am see healed and when but, you're but I, healed I, when you're healed you're able to discuss without getting triggered yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And and I'm not surprised you're saying this. We didn't talk about this last time we were together, but I'm not surprised because I could, I could feel the sort of togetherness. You get you become whole again. And, yeah. Uh, and it's I was going to tell you the the story when I met you. That although you had a strong reaction when I first met you, I thought that was a good story because yeah. you made perfect sense to me. You're like, oh, that's oh, you 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 knew why you reacted the way you did, and you told me, and you were honest. I was like, oh, okay, oh, no problem. No, um, you asked. I want to go back to the heart. That you you said you expected that I was going to be a real uh, man hater or something, and be like all pro woman and feminist and all that, you know. That's what you said. It was your you producer. Your, that it was your producer was like in my ear, just repeating that over and over again. Roseanne can't wait to talk about women's issues. Can't wait to talk about powering women. She was still literally in the makeup room saying that to me over and over and over again. And when I got out of the makeup booth into the hall, there you were. And that's what prompted the whole thing. So Yeah. And what so, did you say then? What happened? I know that you, I, you said I, I, I said, I said, so it's great. Yeah, I said, it's great to meet you. I hear you want to talk about empowering women because this producer has been chanting it for the last 20 minutes and you had a reaction. And I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, I said, oh, I'm not for, <laughs> I'm not for the women. The women disgust yeah. me. That's what you said, huh? <laughs> Some, yeah, something like that. I go, something because like these bitches will <laughs> sit around on their ass and not even know their husband is doing anything to their daughters. The, because, you know, that's how fucking stupid yeah. and brainwashed and brain dead they are. And so who said motherhood means sainthood? It ain't that you had the kid. It's that you protected them. And if you didn't, something's wrong with you. And you leave a lot of victims. And those victims right now, as I feel, who's being activated by certain political forces that, you know, just want to eradicate their lives in the most violent of ways, which is what I fear is coming to our country. Well, it's interesting, Roseanne, you would say that because um, I, I wrote a book, I think I told you this, I wrote a book about narcissism and in there I wanted to write about, I wanted to write about pre-revolutionary France because it was the only time I could find so much childhood trauma and sexual abuse and I wanted to rep report about or theorize that there could be mobs, there could be guillotines and here we are. 
here we are. I didn't know about social media. It was 20 years ago. I didn't know about social media. I didn't know about cancellation. I'd never heard of these things at the time, but I could see the personality styles and I knew how trauma survivors will, will scapegoat to manage their own aggression. They'll externalize it and project uh, and have personality constructs that defend that. And uh, right. that's what you're talking about. It's interesting that you see yeah, it. Now, the before the mic's heated up. Go- that create a person with, you know, I mean, I tried to be simple about it. And my healing stuff I talk about all the time that nobody fucking gets. <laughs> but, uh, I get it. I get it. I said, I said uh, how I knew I was mentally ill and divided was I would say one thing and yet do another. Right. Right. Perfect. And it was terrifying to live that way because I forgot and I had a bad memory on top of that. So I forgot Mm. that I made these deals with so-and-so or owed this. I forgot all that and just moved on, you know, when I changed my mind, Mm -hmm. Uh, never looking Mm -hmm. back, you know, I forget people quicker than you know, but I mean, it takes me a really long time to build up to where I can actually see the picture that I have chosen another person to be with who don't like me at all. Mm. So I'm like, mm. okay, your shit's over. Fourth time's the charm. That's it. I'm done. So I I never learned how to um, be good in a relationship, which is, of course, what the Roseanne show was about, this perfect, idealized husband and wife relationship, you know, that was important to me. Yeah. And that's how it was. But, uh, you know, I have bad, I, I have my picker, my man pickers all fucked up. Yeah, that's how that works. It, it, the trauma, the, one of the odd things about the human, you, you know, you, I want to talk to you a little bit about, you said before the mic's heated up that you understand the human mind, the human psyche, and, and you've mentioned heart, and people don't talk enough about the heart-mind connection. But one of the things that trauma does that makes you attracted to people and circumstances that are just like the original problem. And that's an odd well, thing. You no one ever talks about it. When you're- when you're like a, a damn, you know, you know, the damage takes so many forms, right? But one of them is that you want to create home sweet home. And that includes all the shit that you ignore the next day. <laughs> That's part mm-hmm. of the program. Mm-hmm. You know. Hey, I'm going to, I'm well, going to. In fact. This guy. Huh? In fact, you, you mentioned the bad memory. It, it, there's all this data that shows that severe trauma causes a shrinkage in your hippocampus. So it's actually a neurological, well, all this stuff is neuropsych, let's be fair. But you actually do have an impaired memory. It's part of the syndrome. Yeah. And then after three generations, that becomes auto, whatever the word is, where it's passed on to the generation. It comes to them yep. whether they have trauma or not. Because it's biological. Intergenerational. Three generations. Well, it, it, and it's, yeah, intergenerational transmission of trauma. We don't know if that's because of the state of the mom or dad that transmits something to the kid, or is it epigenetic, or is it both? We, we just no, don't it's know yet because you can't really separate. It's right in front of his fucking face and then has to yeah. lie about yeah. seeing it and is taught through violence yeah. or things or starvation or torture, the things people do to their kids to get them to not tell on them. But that's part of well, the tell whole. Me, that's part of the whole script yeah, too. Tell me more about the mind heart because you mentioned you mentioned an insight into how the mind works, and then you mentioned heart, which people usually leave out of the mind. The mind, which is mind body, ultimately. What is your understanding of that? Well, I'm a Torah student, you know, so I just have to say that that that's where I look for my answers, and I always find them there. So. I always say it's Torah, but uh, Torah Torah does tell us the kind of prayers we offer for redemption and wholeness within our broken parts as a people, Mm. as a tribe, as a continent, as a, you know, multiracial makeup of a planet, all of us being pieces of a big big, big, beautiful jigsaw puzzle thing. 
What you do you know? see going forward? You've talked about the splintering and the jigsaw puzzle and the acting out of trauma, you know, in mobs. What, what, what gets us through this? How are we going to get better? Uh, this is going to sound narcissistic. And I know how you shrinks are always jumping on that, like thinking, you know, that a per you assume that a person cannot be a narcissist and have multiple personality disorders so that at other times she has no narcissism at all. You guys can't figure mm -hmm. out how it works in the least. You're all, you're all messed up in all your analyses, which causes you to over medicate, particularly women of my age to keep us shut up about what we've seen you and your forebears and all, all the men in our families, mostly our, our pastors, rabbis, priests, you know, every man in authority doing some nasty stuff. And then the women all bustling around them to cover it up. And blaming you, the child victim. So that is what this age is about. They've reached voting age. And, and, and um, what, what, what gets it together? How do, we, how do we get through it? Well, well you're going to have to listen to me. That's the part that sounds narcissistic when it's actually offered in the most benevolent manner because I'm offering it as an old Jewish grandmother type who studies Torah and understands what God is saying to us in these, in these amazing times where in which we really got to start talking to each other without a lot of BS baggage from 20,000 years that we've dragged here. Look where it's gotten us. Mm. Don't work. Mm -hmm. It's time for the third thing. And that's what I always call this, this time now. It's the third thing. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I saw that since I was uh, just a little child that it would, it would come and uh, it would, because it was prophesied in Torah that there would be a Jubilee. And that's where I think we're going. So that's a lot of stuff to talk about. I'd love to get many people talking about it because it's so doggone interesting, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's what yeah. I find it. And I also love the concept of healing and how the human being and the mind uh, the, of the human being and the soul of the human being, which God created and then made this bizarre outfit we wear, walk around in. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, he, 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 he wants us to fix ourselves and fix, therefore, mm -hmm. people to vision a wonderful fix. Or everything, which is right at our fingertips, once we turn on the light of uh, in uh, brilliance, the brilliance of uh, the mind of God, and we we start letting it in our own mind, and we start coming up with great solutions instead of war and slavery and um, debt slavery. We're old enough to be doing better now, and I think we're going to. So I wonder if you could explain to me what the second thing was and what you mean by Jubilee. Oh, that's all you biblical. You said the third thing. Well, the oh, third thing is the Jubilee. The third thing is the book of the the third thing is really the book of numbers becomes uh decoded and only a computer could could bring us there, you know. So the book mm -hmm. of numbers is so precise and it's like all this, uh, it's, uh, you know, this is the stuff when I talk about it, everyone's really bored and why I have no friends. No, left. I don't. I, so I'm I, trying not I, to I'm, talk about <laughs> it. I'm, I'm fascinated. This is Drew's, right up Drew's alley. Yeah, I like this stuff. I, I, and I, I have to beg ig ignorance on the book of numbers. I don't know what's in there. Well, it's kind of like physics. You know, when, once it's destructured and decoded through all these incredible um, Byzantine layers they added on to, I guess they had to add it on because they knew er everywhere they went and what they were teaching, you know, everybody would call that uh, 
black magic or devil worshiping or something when it was actually um, metallurgy, science. And so these people have called science uh, wizardry for thousands of years. And now the fact is they're the wizards and science as in numerical uh, um, elemental understanding of physics itself never changes. It's immutable. So that's a big switch we're all going through. It's a big old um, hourglass flip mm. in mm-hmm. consciousness. So right. everything is kind of, well, we're getting smarter is a real fast way of saying it. We've seen too much to pretend anymore. The pieces have gone together and painted a picture in our head, even though we're afraid to say the words, but we know. We're afraid to say the words, well, I tell we you- are when we say the words. This is the place we live in now here in America. Uh, if you say the wrong twid, tri- trigger words, you'll be arrested on the spot, as happened at the Grammys the other night with that guy who refused to bow down to Biden. And it was a black killer man at the Grammys, and they they killer Mike, yeah, 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 and they arrested him because he wasn't taking his mm. Biden uh, oath. You know, they're having a big yeah. civil war. People don't know that we're in a civil war, and it's a war of intelligence uh, on the news. Well, that that's that's interesting because um, you you were talking about you know we. We've learned things, and and what I've certainly learned across COVID, and with the Twitter files and all these things that have come to light, is how much we were being, have been, or still are probably being manipulated in terms of the information we get. I mean, today Tucker Carlson went to, or yesterday went to Moscow and interviewed uh, Blender of Putin, and that's people are freaking out about that. And by the same token, more. <laughs> Tucker or or Putin? No, I've already interviewed Tucker. It was a great interview too. But no, Putin yeah. because you know I'm a Russian. You know I'm from the U- Ukraine, and when it was the so, U.S. So am I. Yeah, you here too. Are? We're probably yeah. cousins or some yeah, shit. My, no, I know. I know. I and let me just tell you, Except we were part of the diaspora. Far different. Your your head well, shape. Well, that's my mom. Mine. Yeah, my mom. My mom got in there, but my dad was your head shape. And uh, what and, was your mom's uh, head shape? Uh, long, long and narrow. And, yeah, she had some Scottish yeah. stuff going on. And, and uh, but my dad was the, his family, extended family was the Holodomor. It was post World War One. It was you know Stalin coming in. It was a big diaspora. Was that around when your family left? Oh, they were murdered there. They never left. Mm. They're, they're still mm. there mm. in a mass grave. Uh, a whole town of them, a whole town of farmers. Mm. Mm. And uh, uh, a few escaped. My grandmother and two of her siblings escaped because there were people who were helping mm. Jews escape the Nazis. And uh, Oh, it was, the, it was the Nazi. Is that there? So, yeah, yeah, but they also oh had to get away from the czar because the czar was my grandfather. Father told me that the czar would come around to all the Jewish neighborhoods and take any boy nine years old and older and make him go in the czar's army. And that's why the people rebelled so hard. And that's why the Marxists and them put them down so hard. Because right there it was, I always say, well, Western history is little more than Jew on Jew violence. Hmm. Interesting. An interesting frame on this, but uh, so with, on that happy note, uh, yeah, I know. I, I did, did. Your family end up in Chicago initially. That's where a lot of in New York and Chicago is where they all went. Was that your family also? My grand, my great grandfather, Grandpa Joe, he walked from Ellis Island, New York, to Kansas City, mm-hmm. uh, Kansas. And um, 
that's where he set up shop there and worked and had kids and all that crazy stuff there, right there. But he walked. And that was after he was a nine-year-old boy and his mother walked him and nine siblings out of Russia when the czar was coming to take all the Jewish boys age nine and over and put them in the czar's army. His mother walked nine children out of Russia into Poland. And so it's like, well, oh my God, this story never yeah. ends. It never ends and it hasn't ended for Look, years. But it might be at the Remember the end, uh, the end of Fiddler on the Roof was them, the whole town, walking to Poland, right? I mean, that's what that was. Uh, and so, you know, these, these, this is a, and, and the, the, the unfortunate ones were the ones that stayed behind. Those were the fortunate ones. The, the whole Adomar was just atrocious. You might, anyone wants to know about that, read Michael Malice's, I think it's called White Pill. Uh, yeah. he gets Michael into Malice. all that. It's just unbelievable. Michael yeah. Malice is, he is a genius guy. He's a genius. I, um, I agree with you. I think, Roseanne, I think I, we're in for some more, you know, you asked me what was going to happen. It's they're going to yeah. try to try to get us to uh, hate on each other as much as they can. Uh, they're going to get us to hate on Trump more at, more than they they have in the past what seven years. The people who are loving on Trump they hate us, and we're targeted. And they're going to try some shit and whatever they can come up with to keep their communist revolution going here and steal all our money. Like Ava Peron. We are going to take a little break. Uh, and Roseanne Barr, find her at roseannebarr.com. Check her podcast out. Put it up there, Caleb, if you would. There you are, the Roseanne Barr podcast. We're going to take a little break, Roseanne. Uh, we're going to do some business. We are very fortunate to have good supporting uh, clients here. Wait, don't go away because I want to back oh. to you. I want to talk oh, about... I, oh, I want okay. to talk about... Yeah, it's just a break. It's a break. Sorry. Oh. But uh, yeah, oh, I want to okay. talk after the... After the break, about the suit, uh, Gina uh, Carano is is uh, and Elon Musk is in on it. And I saw you tweet about it like an hour before the show. Yeah, we'll talk about that uh, after this. We all know the value of a good night's sleep. We feel better, look better, have more energy to spare, but you could be missing out on all of those benefits if you're sleeping on sheets that are too hot or too cold or just plain uncomfortable. I have the solution. Cozy Earth Bedding. Cozy Earth is the softest and most comfortable sheets, blankets, loungewear, and more. They use premium viscose from highly sustainable bamboo, and we sleep in them regularly. I wear their t-shirts. Susan wears their pajamas. Cozy Earth Bedding comes with a 100-night sleep trial, which means you have up to 100 nights to sleep on them, wash them, try them out. If you're not in love, just return them within 100 days for a full refund. Susan and I love them. In fact, we have Cozy Earth sheets on our bed right now, and they made a huge difference in our sleep. If you've never tried Cozy Earth, we have some awesome news. You can save up to 35% off Cozy Earth right now. But hurry, this offer will not last. Go to CozyEarth.com, enter my promo code DREW at checkout for up to 35% off on your first order. That is CozyEarth.com, promo code DREW, C-O-Z-Y-E-A-R-T-H, CozyEarth.com, code D-R-E-W. Are you one of the millions of American women and men dealing with premature hair thinning and hair loss? Or maybe you're scared about inheriting that thinning look because it runs in your family? Start 2024 with a real solution that delivers results without the harsh side effects or unwanted chemicals and no need for prescription. Provia uses a safe natural ingredient, Procapil, to effectively target the three main causes of premature hair thinning and hair loss. By supporting healthy scalp circulation, the delivery of nourishing nutrients, and healthy hair follicle anchoring to your scalp, Provia guarantees more hair on your head than in the shower or on your comb. Right now, new customers save over 50% plus free shipping. Every introductory package includes a full 60-day supply of Provia serum for daily use, plus the Provia Super Concentrate for faster, more noticeable results. Don't wait. Order now to save an extra 10% and get free shipping at ProviaHair.com forward slash Drew. That's P-R-O-V-I-A-H-A-I-R, ProviaHair.com slash D-R-E-W. As a physician, I am deeply concerned about efforts to erode the doctor-patient relationship. And as medical freedom continues to come under assault, I'm on a mission to empower you to be able to take care of yourselves and your family. 
the way you want to. I urge you to get this medical emergency kit from The Wellness Company. It contains essential prescription medication you should really always have on hand. Here's Dr. Peter McCullough, Chief Scientific Officer. It's a very broad and diverse medical kit. can handle everything from a urinary tract infection, a fungal infection, a bronchitis. People can, you know, via telemedicine, uh, get their questions answered and get on the right track. But it's basically an at-home formula. Yep. For the first time, people, instead yep. of being uh, uh, held captive by an urgent care or by a doctor's office or an ER, they can actually do this themselves at home. Save yourself the weight and the hassle and feel better faster. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off. That is drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off the medical emergency kit. And before we bring Roseanne back, I want to tell you about CB distillery, sleeping, stress, joint pain. You might consider CBD from CB distillery. It can be a real changer for some people. CB distillery's targeted formulations are made from highest quality clean ingredients, no fill fillers, just pure effective CBD solutions designed to help and support your health. Here's an oil. In one non in two non-clinical surveys, 81% of customers experienced more calm, 80% said CBD helped them with pain after physical activity, and 90% said they were sleeping better with CBD. And I've used it for sleep, been very impressed. If you struggle with with concerns, um, you might consider CB Distillery. With over 2 million customers and a solid 100% money back guarantee, CB Distillery is a source to stress. And we have good news. I have a 20% discount to get you started. Visit cbdistillery.com. Use code DREW for 20% off, D-R-E-W. That is cbdistillery.com. Code DREW, cbdistillery.com. Dot com and Susan, you use the uh, the uh, topical agent and at just... the top of the show, I, I mm -hmm. rub the ooh on my my achy thumb. The ooh, it's called ah ooh, yeah. There's no, ooh the and ooh. ah. This is the I ooh. have okay. the ooh. It's not, she's not misspeaking. She means ooh. That's what she meant. <laughs> Sounds weird, but the that's ah what it's is called. for dogs, I think. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, yes, you gave some to Rex too, and he's been not barking. Which no, it did help sign. a little bit. I have to report. I okay. had to test it out because they are a great sponsor and. I've never used it before. There you go. So let's bring Roseanne Barr back. And before the break, we were talking about, I didn't keep your tweet, Roseanne, but you just, uh, Elon Musk asked if anybody wants to join in on the suit. And uh, you, you sort of said, uh, I'm right here. I'm in. So, t oh, there it is. Susan, can you help me with that thing in front of the oh, TV? Yeah, thanks. There you are. Uh, please let us know oh, yeah. if you would join the lawsuit against Disney. And and Roseanne said, "Hello, <laughs> that was terrific." <laughs> so t t tell me what what you're thinking about that. I mean, I cannot believe what they did to me. I mean, I just can't. It's so it's beyond the pale, and I mean mm. it in those terms. It was totally anti-semitic mm. and um they have no absolutely no understanding of that at all because you know they they despise jews they really and do. they they in this case the left. Mm. america's democrat uh, uh, the left democrat left and and they canceled, tried to cancel you. I'm, and they can't. And Gina well, they lost try. her job at the. They didn't try to cancel me. They canceled me, stole my life's work, um, perverted it, just just to show me that I better keep my mouth shut, and killed, assassinated my character, who was kind of America's mom. So they assassinated me mm -hmm. as I was America's mom about that and because i said at the time that the iran deal of valerie jarrett and barack obama it was going to lead to the unleashing of uh terror on israel which is what happened october 7th um and if you have seen them, I won't even go into the movie reference I made. But that movie, well, I will. I will say Planet of the Apes, as I understood, it was a movie mm -hmm. about the destruction of the Jews of Europe, as Rod Serling himself, the writer, said. It wasn't, I, I need to say this to Democrats, 
Planet of the Apes was not about black people. Apparently that you you missed something there. But anyway, um, it was about Jews in Germany. That was the subtext. And, uh, you know, it's just very sad how people have been um, completely lied to on every level by this government. And uh, the people's right to cast a vote and have it fairly counted has been violated. And still they yammer on. It's amazing to see it. They must think and they so want Gina it. was. Yeah, and Gina was um, canceled from The Mandalorian, and she's now suing, and Musk is uh, funding it, I guess. Uh, and do you do you know Gina? I don't know. There it is. There's the, the headline no. for it. Um, I don't, but, yeah. you know, they do pick and choose the people that they, I, I didn't finish by saying, and I have been blacklisted, can't get a job, you know. Mm. And also erased from popular culture, any, especially anything having to do with feminism or gay rights, which I paid the price to make those changes in television. But now I'm aced out of there, too. It's an evil silencing and censorship of women my age who, no matter, I think, no matter what we believe or say, but women who are largely my age and also who don't fit the norm that they want women to fit like that's Gina, you know, she's too strong. They, mm. they got to put her down. Mm. And, you know, this is one of the things that I have found myself preoccupied with these days is, is the ability to protect people, uh, protect their basic liberties, their ability to, to speak when they want to speak and say what they want to say. And, have a conversation with somebody, even when I disagree with them or other people disagree with them. Uh, I, I pointed out uh, several times recently that the the most singular uh, sort of perpetrator of misinformation was a scientist who saw something, and it caused the church to become concerned. Uh, then it became then the political leaders became concerned because the populace would lose their sense of themselves in the world and the sense of the church's authority and how the Bible was interpreted. And then they sent him twice to the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, that man was Galileo Galilei. Uh, so by sight, do you, do, am I, what I keep asking people lately is, do you want to be the one who suppresses the next Galileo? You, you, you know, Einstein was almost suppressed for the same do. reason. That it's, yeah. Of course yeah. they do. They're all excited. Hey, I'm going to suppress the next Galileo because I'm that I'm that cool. I have no other meaning in life but to destroy geniuses and their works and just gloat about it all day long everywhere I go. Steal their jokes, steal everything from every artist, you know, have them end up shot in Las Vegas dead here on the street, what have you. They don't matter. Nobody who creates nothing matters. It's the money people that matter. Well, that's all bullshit, and that's going to go real quick in the Jubilee. You got explain to me what you mean by Jubilee. I, I can't, don't understand that word yet. Just a massive oh. happy change, or well, what, what? What is a Jubilee? A Jubilee is the end of debt, all debt. Mm. The Jubilee years, and that's what's in the Torah. That um, you know, this is the seventieth Jubilee year. So that means something because of the book of numbers tells us about numbers. And so us, us students that are real studiers, we just don't go, we don't know like just two scriptures that we say over and over, but we study daily and hourly, you know, and uh, it's just very, very deep, but it's all about right now, which I think every calculation you do is about right now. But you can just see the signs of it. You can see the out of control, nonsensical, ridiculous, absurd, uh, naked power walking down the street. And like I say, the little kid turns to his mother because everybody was conditioned to see the emperor there on his horse naked with his schlong hanging there. 
And uh, they're going, oh, look at his beautiful silk suit made from the finest of designers worldwide. One little kid, which I've always been that kid, goes, hey, Ma, looks like the guy's naked to me. The guy ain't got no clothes on. They're like, shh. And of course, everyone turns on the kid. They don't turn on the naked emperor ever because we're we're trained never to put the blame upward, only lateral, especially women. So um, Mm. there's a lot to it, but God's smarter than all of us. And we just are trying to uh, decode and understand what he's telling us, what he's showing us, what what this beautiful... uh, system is telling us it's just beautiful i can't i can't and i can't tell if you're optimistic or pessimistic oh i'm both a lot of shit's gonna die a lot of shit's gonna burn up a lot of shit's gonna go away but i think that it's all going to be the stuff that's based on lies but still you is this is this is this something that you and i will live to see or is it something that you see over a long arc. No, it's already happening. I mean, people in the world are being exposed for being not all that nice. And having vast wealth, like in the billions, which I've said since I ran for president in 2012, I said there needs to be a $100 million maximum wage. And uh, any all billionaires are to be held to account and have to pay the money back to the people they robbed it from or, or face A, the guillotine, or even worse, be forced to pay back the money they actually stole, which I think most of them would choose the guillotine as that is a swift and painless uh, execution of justice. And so, you know, they don't want to have to I, pay I, I be, be careful. Be careful with the guillotines. I, I, we've had enough of that. I would say with all the cancellations and the, the one. The I'm one, only speaking, speaking in the of, context. I'm speaking in the context of a great novel, Tale of Two Cities, where they did go to I the understand. guillotine in France. They they did yes, go to the yes. guillotine because the the uh, people held the royals to account, and that was the people's form of justice and. You know, I think the people are going to have to have some sort of justice where those people who robbed our country and sent our kids off to die for, you know, rich men's benefit and not the United States benefit. I mean, they're going to have to answer to us because that's how this works of by and for the people, which they don't like too much. But I think a big change is coming and we're like, you know what? It is a by and for the people, and you're not going to divide us any further so that you get away with this big-ass yank. And every one of your names is on that Jeffrey Epstein list, and we know it, and we know the laws you made after you went there, too. So let's bring it. Yeah, I, I would just I just want to caution the other thing the French Revolution teaches us, as do many other similar historical moments, was that when you start throwing people on the guillotine, eventually you go on the guillotine. Everybody goes on the guillotine. But uh, I'm just talking about, well, yeah. but, but the guillotine was done away with. It was only used for a limited amount of time, and that was to, uh, you know, so the people could have justice against the royal the royal class yeah it's it's a it's a little more complicated i've, I've been actually really no it was a class i've been war, studying and they were starving people it was well we're starving it, it was, was like bidenomics it was like just like bidenomics yes. over there yes. but i've been studying the shit out of this for the last six months and i've been obsessed actually okay. because it's it is awfully similar to our current moment and right? and it was the royal yeah it was the royalists that went up first, but then the people that put the royalists up went up on the guillotine, and then the people that put those people on the guillotine went up on the guillotine. And in fact, guillotines were used in France well into the 20th century. Now, they weren't public displays of sca- on the scaffolding the way they did it during the Revolution. The public, you know, the 
the the spectacle of it was the odd thing as much as many other things in the French Revolution. But but you know, it first the Jacobins put the Royalist up, then the Sans Culotte put the Jacobins up, and then the military started stepping in and putting the Sans Culotte up, and then Napoleon said stop. And he put a stop to the whole thing. Yeah. But it would have kept going. That's the thing, because people are pissed when you put their family on the guillotine and they find yeah. ways to put you on the guillotine. So I, I think, I, you I know, think a more they should have stopped subdued. At the Royals. My personal opinion is. Well, of course, you know, of course. Like the king it does, it never stops like, like that. It but never it stops that way. It should, because it, like it shouldn't even be his daughters like Anastasia or none of that shit. It should just be the friggin' big guy, you know, he's got to go. Leave other people yeah. out of it. We didn't make those decisions. We, we've just now moved into guy. a different revolution. We, we just, just, yeah. trained, we just well, moved into the Russian revolution, revolution which, was, which was a little a different. Revolution of yeah, common a little different. Sense. Yeah. A revolution of well, common sense. Yeah, you know what, Roseanne? It's so funny you say that. Uh, Christina P and I were, were doing podcasts for a while. This is Tom Segura's wife, and she she came up with a term called the Rational Revolution, and we actually have a high sign for it. It's the Rational Revolution. You just just everybody. It's time for a Rational Revolution. Return to rationality. And by the way, part of rationality is uncertainty. This weird certitude that everybody has about everything that's irrational. The rationality needs to be restored, and that includes, includes humility and careful thought and, cons and constantly considering that you may be wrong. That's rational. I think we just need some shit where it's based on truth and actual science. I, I completely, thousand percent agree. Because you, you know you the, really whole, the whole to thing. Do unto your, you have to actually treat people how you want to be treated or you're going to get fined. Golden rule. Just bring the golden yeah, rule back. Enough. Bring the golden rule back. That's enough. Yep. Maybe and, fairly, and uh, profit sharing. I got it all wrote, written down. It's called uh, government by grandmothers. And it's based like it is our constitution based on the 13 tribes of the Iroquois nation, which Benjamin Franklin went and studied with and observed in order to create representational government. Did you know that? I didn't, but I'm not surprised. That's really interesting. Because how, how do you get 13 nations to get along is really the question. And he, they the did The grandmothers it. did it. The grandmothers had their grandmother's council. So I took that like Benjamin Franklin did, but he said, represent whatever. They don't like nothing tribal because it <laughs> makes too much sense. But anyway, right. they're always trying to get at that because they don't, they don't like strong women. That's the bottom line. They right. don't like strong women right. like me. Who go, why don't you put your wiener back in your pants and go back in your house and stay there? Who, who is they? Yeah, who's they? Men the guys generally? Guys walk around showing their schlong everywhere. F them. <laughs> and, well, well, so <laughs> that would leave us only guys without schlongs, and that's a smaller population. But in any event, uh, you, you identify yourself as a radical constitutionalist. Is that, is that part of the... Uh, the grandmother's council? Yeah. The grandmother's council, because I figured, see, every grandmother will be responsible for at least 100 people, which is already how it is. That's how it is right now <laughs> in mm. communities. And all they do is go around asking the young people what they think or their influencing and all that horse shit. But it's the grandmother that's paying their rent. And they never ask the grandmother that's buying those cars for those kids and paying their damn rent. Of two generations of a bunch of ungrateful little bastards that never had to work for a damn thing in their <laughs> damn car. Hello? J Jake, you around? Jake, you there? <laughs> 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 I did my own bastard shit. Oh, I thought there was a technical issue. What about <laughs> No. <laughs> I just wondered what you thought of her ungrateful bastard. Her ungrateful oh, bastard I, bit. Jake, I, I, I you it. don't seem like an ungrateful bastard. I'm not, but you know, one out of five. Okay. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> so, well, they're all that way so, sometimes. 
I mean, I feel like it, nobody's uh, growing up and accepting responsibility, at least of all any women. It's really getting on my nerves with this woman stuff. And none of them doing anything that they should be doing. Women should be like protecting. That, women should be protecting the children of this country. That should be their first uh, reaction. Or that should be it, especially mothers. Hello, why are you out there selling grain? You better get on this. You, we have to do what needs to be done. We have to protect the children um, in harm's I, way. I, I don't. I don't see. I don't see. I don't have noticed women turning away from that obligation or that instinct. They're letting either. their kids get vaccinated. Uh, I don't know. Well, now no, we just moved into a different territory. Go ahead, Roseanne. Yeah, but you know, everybody's got their own way of thinking there. But oh my God. You don't even want to go in that. You don't want to put a toe in that water. Hell no. <laughs> it, it, it's complicated, I must say. Uh, and well, uh, it, it does sad. create. I mean, like for me, I have to be so incredibly sad. Mm. To These talk about it. Bastards. These goddamn brainwashing rat bastard Fauci's. You know, the devil called <laughs> up the Vatican and you know what he said? Hey. I got to get out of the business with this Fauci guy out there. I put in my tender, my resignation. Did you know that? Uh, did he what, Did he then walk over to the WEF or where'd he go next? The devil? <laughs> yeah. He just went straight away. Yeah, he went half into Fauci and half into Klaus Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> did he uh did he stop by the Soros family at all from your point of view? You know, though he's such a puppet, but nobody will let you say that. He Soros? Nah, he ain't even the one. You know, they're all they people, if you know, you know. But if you see, you see. And if you would open up your eyes and actually look at that's what's happening to our, shall we say, former imperialist master, the UK, England, um, that we broke away from. Well, I mean, we tried to break away from, but they took us back. People don't know that. But anyway, we might finally be breaking away from them, from the... Uh, Church of England and that whole deal. We might be. I, I'm not. Go yeah. ahead. I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're getting at exactly. Well, if you're looking uh, at what time with the king there, things are not kind of, mm -hmm. things are going a third way. You know, a third thing is occurring over there in the British monarchy too. A third thing is occurring <laughs> yeah, everywhere, but, everywhere. The third thing that was. Yeah, by the way. Did was about did you know that the, no tell me okay. y2k in numbers computer code there was a one one in a space okay but everybody was freaked out at the change of the century that all computers might become affected and everything was going to crash remember right. that i remember because that oh yeah it, it was going to roll over and they would be adding a zero between the ones which is the third thing and mm. so all of that stuff did occur since that happened because everything, I mean, to say it comes out of left field is one way of saying it, but like no computer, no human source, no army has ever called it right. It always comes out of left field unexpected and is in a surprise, doesn't it? Yes, that's true. That's true. So speaking so of the royal family, I, I want to. None of them's pretty good. None of them are good at their jobs. But uh, yeah. Well, the, this, uh, the this, royal there's two family, things going on there. That, no. Well, I guess it was yeah. kind of implicated in the Epstein thing that it mm. wasn't just Andrew who liked pedo, who was friends with top pedophiles in the world, Jimmy Savile being one. It wasn't just Andrew, it was also the king of England. And, you know, his name is uncovered there. And now he's sadly ill with, with cancer. He 
He was just, uh, so he may be stepping down soon. So that's something I see that nobody else is looking at, but that's kind of cool. And it was kind of cool that when uh, Trump won in uh, wherever it was after Iowa, that the stock market rallied. I mean, all these signs are there. It's very interesting. I think it is that reality is really created by uh, common thought, consensus. It's a manufacture. It's consensus manufactured by humans. So I think it's very mm. important that we start discussing that rather than Kim Kardashian's ass or what have you. What world are we you, you back to the, What world do we even see? Well, what, what world are we even aware that we're yeah. living in? Not many people are aware right. of the world we're living in. Yeah, and a lot of that, as you said, is uh, distorted by brainwashing and the press is the primary perpetrator. I mean, we just had a thousand year flood in California. No, it just rained a bit. It rained and it rains every February like this. This is a good one. It's not, a, not I've seen worse. It didn't last as long as the ones that really caused the houses to come down the hillside. But if you listened to the press, you would have thought this is the end of the world here in Southern California, number one. Number two, I'm very disturbed that the but way yeah, they're reporting they never panic the royal family. actual crime. Notice that. Yeah, I, I know. An actual, right, actual stuff that they should be paying. Well, that's what I'm going to tell For instance, the, 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 the king of England, what kind of cancer does he have? There's cancers that you can cure, and, and there's cancers that kill you in six months, and there's cancers that's that what kill they you. Were saying, never, essentially. They, they think it's cross, cross. No, they, they didn't. They did not say, pro no, they didn't. They said he was going in for a procedure on his prostate. And as part of that workup, they found a cancer. Now, they, they kind of alluded to it maybe being prostate, but they're not telling anybody. So, A, cancer is hundreds of illnesses. It's not one thing, number one. And then poor Kate Middleton, she had an abdominal surgery. That means exactly nothing. Once again, there's hundreds of abdominal surgeries. But really? the fact that... The, Oh, so many different kinds. Of, I mean, it's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of procedures. And, and, but then they go, she'll be in the hospital for 10 days. And I heard that and I was like, uh-oh, that never happens unless they're getting chemo or unless oh, there a, no. was a really big cancer surgery. So I'm oh, worried no. that she too has cancer. Oh, yeah. Well, use your crystal brain and tell me what you think because uh, I'm really worried that she has kept that. But she has a legitimate reason to keep it down. I don't think she wants her kids to know. So I, I, you know, what is your crystal brain? That's what my crystal brain tells me. There's something bad going on there and I, I feel bad for her. Well, I know that she'll have availability to the best medical that exists. So that yeah. gives her, you know, a bit of a leg up on, on everybody else on earth. So I hope it yeah. goes good. Sometimes. You know, they, say they have them treatments now that knock cancer out. And these are things I've read. I, I don't know they're scientific. Well, no, no. We, listen, most cancers, are, most cancers are curable or can be turned into a chronic illness. I mean, mo most people don't realize breast cancer now is a chronic illness. It's not, it's not something that typically kills you. It can. All these illnesses can, a certain cell type, certain genetics, certain physiologies. But most cancer, look, look I, I've said this for years. How come all these women are much, dying of breast cancer then? I don't get it. Over time, they probably took a long time with it because you can usually get it, in, it. Sometimes it takes you. It does. There's certain breast cancers that are not very well treatable, but most are quite treatable and can go on for a you know, third, third of women get breast cancer. And a, no. very few, not a lot are dying the way they used to. But I will tell you what, that um, uh, shit, I was, what was I going to say? Eh, lost it. That's the aging brain. <laughs> there you go. You know, you about <laughs> cancer that treat, turned into a chronic. Oh, it's not I know I was going to say, which is, is that I've been saying for years that opiate addiction has way worse prognosis than the vast majority of cancers. Opiate addiction is much more likely to kill you than most cancers by far. Yeah, yeah. that's why I did you my whole 10th season on, I did my whole 10th season on opiate addiction. And that's why they killed my, my drug overdose, which, hey, thanks, guys. Good thing you didn't have me raping a toddler and then setting the world on fire. Thanks for the dignity. <laughs> You're right. They could have done that. I hate them. <laughs> what? 
What? They could have done that after all. <laughs> they could have could have had you be, 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 accuse you of pedophilia and then uh, lighting the atmosphere on fire with a nuclear weapon. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Roseanne, you know uh, what's going on these guys? I'm afraid of what they're going to do. When you know, they said they had that Epstein list about five weeks ago. It's like, okay, well, where is this? Where is this? That yeah. like they like they silenced the. Uh, the Biden laptop just before that election. Then they silenced the Jeffrey yeah. Epstein that lady on ABC again, of course. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, now yeah. they're silencing the Epstein thing for the 50th time. Well, come on, when are we yeah. going to see that list so we can see what senator, what congressperson was over there? And then we look up yeah. every law they passed after they went over there, and it needs to be booted out the door. Because any law made after you are in some voodoo cult, that don't go with the Constitution. Yep. Yep. I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, Roseanne, you've been very kind to spend time with us. Oh, Caleb. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Yeah, Caleb yeah, is I had our to producer, ask my question. Uh, technical guy. Okay. Hi. Hi, Roseanne. My question yes. for you Hi. is, as a former presidential candidate, do you have any advice for all of the current presidential candidates who are running right now? Oh, I'm trying to get back in the picture. What yeah. I, what I, oh, there I there am. You are. There no. you are. There you are. You're back. There. Oh, there. Yeah. Yep. Kayla, let me drop I'm yourself out. I'm adjusting you. There drop you yourself out. Too. Right yeah, I'm dropping okay, out there. Okay. Okay. okay what did you say? What did you say? Oh, I asked you. you so what's my, on, Caleb? As a former presidential candidate yourself, do you have any advice for the people who are currently running for president? So it depends who we're talking about. I'll tell you one thing. When you think that what they really are is called public servants and how they've done with enriching themselves. You know, I've had a lot of servants, waiters and maids and such. And if they was coming over and robbing me blind, I, I wouldn't, I would fire them, put them in jail. These people, they don't even know. They should be all getting out of the servant business. I beg you, get out of the servant business. You're no good at it. You're, you're all fucked up with it, you see. It isn't there for you to go and steal everything in insider trade, you idiot. You're supposed to be doing shit the- that we tell you to do. You forgot that because you went to Epstein Island and you took a bow to Satan or whoever got you, you know, whatever you had to do to get what you got. Because I'll tell you what, none of you has hardly got there on talent. None of you are like me. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's true. You know what? Uh, Kanye can kiss my ass. <laughs> And I'll end on that one. Kanye. <laughs> okay. Well, and I don't. I don't know he's why arrogant. Kanye. Well, you're you're taking it because he thinks he's so arrogant. I can shame him in I the see. arrogant situation. But uh, yeah, I see. He, yeah. I see. I don't know. Sometimes they're just for me the jokes. They're just for me. Okay. Well, Kanye we will West, leave. You should have me back on with mm-hmm. Kanye West. Because I like to tear him a new asshole on some kind of uh, platform, you know. Uh, I social. will do my damnedest. Let's do that. We'll, we'll do our best. I was going to say, I'm, but what, yeah. what is I'm your, your issue to get with Kanye? Any black person to come on my show. Let me talk to your audience, Doctor Drew, for just a minute. You know, I'm trying to get any black person of note to come on my show. Scheduled so many, and at the last minute, they all cancel. I don't know if that's part of the continuing. Um, blacklisting of me, Jew listing of me by media, but I really am offended by that. And, uh, you know, um, I don't believe in segregation and I'm going to continue to fight it. I don't like that. I, I, so I'm with I, you. Want I want her to keep, keep come going. On my show because if he thinks he's got tea to spill, you better come on my show. That'd be really interesting. You two together would be very interesting. Oh, yeah, for I sure. I just want to confront oh, black people in America on how anti-Semite they are. And they don't even know they're being used like that. I'm terrified for them that they're being used like that. So I do. I will continue. I, don't, I, haven't, huh? I haven't noticed that that 
I mean, when you think about the demonstrations and things, I don't see a lot of black people in those Palestinian demonstrations. Are they being, is it some, some other way they're being used? Uh huh. They're, I'm talking about the BLM, you know, the uh, socialist mm. class of working class kids. They're being like really mm. lied to. It's just so sad to me. They don't even talk about labor rights or benefits anymore. It's not, it's not your daddy's left, I say. It's not even a left. It's like a fascist right with a new, new kind of dress on. It's not good. Mm. You've got to stop talking to each other. In the Jubilee. Yeah, open our mind and try to talk to a person you don't agree with or who doesn't agree with you and see what happens. It often escalates to a terrible place very quickly. We need to fix that. Mm. I agree, and I feel better leaving this conversation there than at kissing Conway's, Kanye's ass. We I had think. a good uh, suggestion on I Rumble. Said, okay. She should... I said oh, kick kicking his ass. ass. Okay, <laughs> kicking his ass. Dave <laughs> okay, okay, kick, kicking his ass. I thought he said he could dude. kiss. He, well, he could. Uh, okay, got it, got it. Okay, right, ass got ass it. Hell yeah. I'm How trying about to Dave Chappelle. About he'd be a good. He'd be Dave a good guest. Dave Chappelle. I tried to get him to come on there and talk about his Jew stuff. He don't call me mm. back, neat, but he should. He yes. ran out. He there said, and he is he such a, and, you know, he, he is such a, he is such a great guy. Defended. Such a great. None of them defend. Have you ever met Dave? Mm. Of course. It, it, it was, it was, you know, I, I can't blame people for running for cover in the midst of various cancellations because it was so fucking dangerous. It was dangerous. I get it. People have, people protect. You got themselves. blackballed too, yeah, so I've don't feel bad. It's, it, and you sort of keep you find differing ways to uh, sort of make a difference. But it is a bad feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a so horrible who, feeling. Who but at least you have a voice you. now, and you can and speak they tried out. To kill me? me? No, Roseanne. No, me. Who did defend you when that happened? Who defended you back then when all this happened? What? What? Who defended? Were there people you? like did like were there notable people you? that that defended you and stood up for you when all this happened like a couple years ago? Yeah, but not many. I mean, Judd Apatow, I'm very thankful for him mm. saying things about me. Mm. But, you know, uh, some people from the uh, comedy Well, because I, I, mean, I, I personally was, was quite shocked that people didn't step up because you were actually the first winner of the, the GLAAD Vanguard Awards. Like, you would think that you had really kind of forged a path yeah. a, for a lot of, you know, female centric television like they didn't really have stuff like this back at that time they were focusing on yeah. working class no, Americans in the way that Roseanne did and so you really forged yeah. a path for a lot of people and an entire genre of people and yet yeah. I can't like I can't think of anyone other than Judd that actually stood up for you at all and that was that was bizarre to me uh, that didn't make any sense that they would drop you after decades like you've been in this industry for decades like i honestly can say one of my earliest memories as a child was like overhearing the roseanne theme song playing in the other room for my parents and at my grandmother's house like this mm -hmm. is whenever i was i was like in diapers i can remember this so you've it's mm -hmm. not like you're just been around for 10 years you've been around longer than a lot of people listening and watching the show have even been watching television and yet no one stepped up like that was bizarre to panic me. over a the, joke on the, Twitter. The crazy hysteria that people were in. Hysteria. It was a massive show. Oh, Norm, and it was like Norm McDonald, of course. Norm, my defense. of course. He's mm. a big friend. And Bob Einstein, mm. too, who played Super Dave, was mine. They, they came to mm. my defense. Um, Bob Einstein thought it was hilarious. He's like, this is unprecedented anti Semitism. Because, you know, Iger mm. folded to basically ABC's um, very politically active and BLM friendly um, people at the network who didn't want my show in the first place, but Iger kind of forced it on them. So mm. they always mm. were messing with me because they didn't like me. And, um, I think what happened to me is that they didn't like me because I didn't like, you know, once I didn't go for their um, – 
I believe in free speech. That's it. Mm. I don't. Mm. I don't believe in should be hammered into silence or capitulation, especially in an artist structure, an artist built city. I mean, that's about as Nazi I think, as you can get. Well, well and also, yeah. you know, uh, sorry, I keep going uh, on about McCarthy, this, but it it's also McCarthyism. It it just seems to me like it's something that shareholders should sue over because this was a very popular show that had just come back after oh, decades and again one. became a very po- number one show yet again. And then it, it just makes no sense to me financially as a network. I don't know if you've heard of this show called On Patrol Live that used to be playing on A and E. It was a very it's a big show. It's literally what they do is it was they different. have like it was, that was, it was a different. different show. They, they have camera crews in. Yeah. I'm just saying they have camera crews in ten different cities yeah. that follow police officers yeah. live as they're going yeah. around patrolling their communities. That show got canceled yeah. just because of around the same time they were having the like I believe it was the George Floyd protest at the same time. Number one show on that network. So we had to wait of people yeah. who watched it wait three years for then another network, Reels Network, to come and say, hey, we're going to buy the buy the show, rename it to On Patrol Live from Live PD. And again, now it's the number one mm-hmm. show on that network. So to me, it seems like the mm-hmm. executives are making these terrible decisions. This is not even just like culturally, but it's just financially bad decisions for their shareholders to cut off shows that are that popular. Well, yeah. agreed. I mean, it was their only number one show in over a decade. And it was not just number one. It was like a monster hit, not just number one. It had 28 million people tune in the first show. Mm-hmm. And it stayed pretty consistent. I remember that. About 22 million by the mm-hmm. uh, 10th or 12th episode. But um, mm-hmm. they, uh, when I saw what they had done to me, uh, besides, this is previous to firing me, how they used me and lied to me and the way they treated me as an employee, that's really where I'd like to get involved in a lawsuit because, I mean, I traveled across country to do free shit um, when the other actors in the show wouldn't. And I did all the interviews. So I guess that was just my free life my life days that, you know, I just offer to Disney a terrible employer who doesn't pay their employees fairly at all for the work done, especially people like me who are old. And so that's how I started getting on Ambien because I had to step, you know, fly everywhere and couldn't sleep. And then Mm -hmm. for them to first fight with me over all those years about me trying to have a Any people of color on my show ever was a fight every week. They didn't want any of that. And when I did have black Mm. people in the factory, the first and second and third episodes, um, the director had all the black people standing in the back. And when I saw that on camera, I mean, I could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. Mm. And I mean, it was that insult every day and I, and when i went back for that 10th season like i tell my kids oh my god it was a gaunt an unceasing gauntlet of sexist anti-semitic insult to me as they tried to work me to death and i did get a severe bron- bronchitis and bronchial infection and they were pissed that i couldn't work the day that i couldn't get out of bed for free mm. Um, you know, they're, 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 and the, yet Bob Iger makes what 75 million a year. And I mean, they're, 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 it's great to see them exposed as being totally out of touch with American people. And when they did fire me, they just, he, I saw him interviewed on Oprah and she said, was it fire, hard to fire Roseanne? He goes, no, not at all. You know, some people, they mm. just uh, they get too big. That's what he said. They just get too big. Being oh, my. Wow. You know, it's too much for one person. I didn't feel bad about it. And I was like, you little. I mean, I give him, you know, I give him one of these. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh. yeah, but uh, he didn't think. Here's what happened. 
I got all these letters from people and they were, I mean, those were my fans. They never came back to the network. That was what, 20 million people they lost. They never came back. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. said they'd never watch anything on ABC again, nor would they said, wrote me, we'll never go to Disneyland. We say for 10 years, F them, well, what they did to you, they did to America's mom, fuck them. And that touched me deeply. But then what touched me even more deeply is, so then through the COVID thing, they shut that down, right? So they come up, yeah. every movie they make, which they stole their ideas pretty much from me and the shit they said I couldn't do, like having gay characters and other stuff like that. They said, no, you can't do that. But I fought and did it. Well, now all their movies are kind of feminist and all that stuff that I used to do a hundred years ago. But um, mm. they're all fail. All their all their amusement parks fail. They lost billions. I'm like fail. I I laughed. I just go, man. I ain't the one that's dead. That was great, God. I thought that was a good fitting joke from God because when you just don't care about people at all. And they didn't care about me at all, even though I saved ABC once by becoming their number one show under Brandon Stoddard, and they were a shit network then. I made them number one. So then I come back 20 years later after Disney digests ABC, and uh, I give them another number one show. I saved them twice. And so what did they do? They call me a racist because BLM types like Valerie Jarrett and the women who were working in the in the uh, inner sanctums there for Bob Iger. Obama operatives like like it is on Netflix too. Totally that's a whole other subject. But um you know they're calling the shots and they don't like to hear uh, women like me who talk about you know Jewish issues, Jewish women's issues, autonomy sovereignty and tribal rights those things they just don't fit into that um diversity crap they they're that yank that damn yank they're putting all the money in their pocket for that yank that diversity crap boy the kickbacks they get for that has nothing to do with students nothing to do with education it's just one mafia against another mafia this whole government is just so crooked it can't be fixed i don't think we can vote our way out of it either do you i hope we can again i i am um i i'm confused by the future you're presenting uh, whether it's something i should feel positive about and the jubilee comes in or uh whether i should be completely pessimistic like and work. give it's up it's like that no, it's like that book, Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. That's what it's going yeah. to be. For people who are in the know and are educated and plugged in, it's going to be our our view of the world will be greatly expanded, and that causes happiness. Well, I I'm I want to leave it on a positive note. We actually have to go right now. We have to run and do something here. Susan Giano's thing's coming in a second. Uh, Roseanne, uh, we always cover really interesting territory. It's a privilege to spend time with you. I hope all the good shit staying. Good. I, I want to. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Rational <laughs> and a rational revolution and, on the heels of that. And uh, keep. Saying whatever you feel. Yeah, and and we, I am a free speech absolutist, and I stand by your right to say whatever you want to say, whether I agree or disagree. I, I'm, I'm, I will go to the mat for you. Well, we all should be going to the mat for everybody, especially those we don't yep. agree. Right? That's America. Agree. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right, everybody. Roseanne Barr. For uh, find me. her on I'm talking X. To you. On God bless. The, the real Roseanne. It's always great talking to you. Hope to see you back get here her stateside. And yeah, get is the book out now too, Roseanne? What are you pushing the book? I'm hiding out. We didn't mention the book yet. There it is, the I'm podcast. Hiding out from, I'm hiding out from having to finish anything. 
Okay. Oh, no, it was a okay. book. Okay. No, it's yeah, the podcast. I'm Check out the podcast. I'm supposed to do that, but you know, I'm old. I We're can gonna... hardly pull off. I'll try. <laughs> All right. Excellent. And hopefully we'll see you here in California. Okay. I'd love to. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Roseanne, next great. time or at the next Skank Fest, where we swam. <laughs> yeah, time. that's where we got to know Roseanne. Yay, Skank Fest! Uh, yeah, which was also a lovely, great experience. Yeah, Skank Fest, which was uh, Roseanne somebody, was exceptionally I, I was so skanky shocked. there too. Well, no, as, a, as a, she was funny, as it retains the Skank Fest, Doug um, Stanhope said it was the best comedy experience he'd ever it's had. I was funny. shocked when he said that. That's it a big made deal. Him drink his own urine. Well, that's a whole different aspect of that whole thing. <laughs> uh, all right. We got to wrap this thing up. We appreciate uh, spending time with us. There's what's coming up there in the next two weeks. Uh, extraordinary guest. We're going to have a special Monday show at noontime to talk to James O'Keefe on February 12th. Uh, Jimmy Dore, Alex Berenson with uh, Kelly Victory coming on back. Zuby, Rob Henderson, the social psychologist, got a new book out called Troubled. Uh, and Del Victory in here tomorrow. And uh, Nikki and Jim Norton on Thursday. Both Del Victory and Nikki and Jim in studio. We're going to have a, really our first Full, I mean, this is the first full fledged in studio we guest. We got to get Roseanne back with an African American guest. Uh, you know, Kanye. I was thinking about it. I mean, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be so amazing. awesome. You know yeah. what, though? Um, I think, I think it's really sad. And she knows that, you know, people are like, oh, you can't go on there. She, you know, you're going to go down. Uh, it's just, it, it's hard to understand why they would book a great, show like hers yeah. and want well, to talk to interesting and person and interesting person but but she she says stuff once in a while that people get all worked up about. no i know but it you have I to think forgive. the cbd made direct sleep that's what the He's jubilee sleeping. is it's a forgiveness forgiveness of of our of our debts which would be things that you've said too so let's say we go in that I direction. I think Susan will be talking about the Jubilee forever forward. And here. what we didn't talk about is that Roseanne is a psychic and she uh, lives in a haunted, haunted house in next time. Hawaii. Next time. We'll do it all next time, but tomorrow we'll see you at Dell Big Tree at 3 o'clock. You'll be here in studio. Our first fully functional in-studio system here with proper lighting and mics and everything, so this will be really fun. We're going to try. We'll see how it goes. All right, so it goes tomorrow. See you tomorrow at <laughs> 3 o'clock Pacific time. Yay! Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor, and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800 800- 273-8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help.